Hello and good morning. I'm Pastor Jerry Bond. Welcome to an old cowboy talking about Jesus. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you and we praise you and we exalt you. And you're worthy to be praised. And we lift up your son that when he is lifted up, he will draw all mankind to himself. We thank you, Lord, that today you've given us a word out of your precious word that shows us and guides us and leads us into the promises that you have for us. Thank you for all you do for the folks. Thank you for the blessings of today. And we just give you praise in Jesus' name. And all the people said in agreement, amen. Today, if you got your Bible, we're going to go in several places. We're going to start out over in Jude, the little book of Jude in verse 24. And part of it, it says, in thy presence, the glory and then we're going to go to Philippians 4, 6. It says, the Lord is near. Rejoice always. The reason for this sermon and the reason for this digging around as an old cowboy would talk about and, and going to the subject at hand is I've been asking myself and I've been asking others, how do you know that you know that you know that God is always present? Well, let's go to the scripture and find out. Many places in the Bible, like Psalm 139 it's verse seven, it says, where can I hide from your spirit? Where can I go from your presence? Can I go to the highest hill, the lowest valley, the deepest sea and hide from your Holy Spirit? Our body, when Jesus came out of that tomb and on the day of Pentecost, he gave us the promise that Joel said in verse two, chapter two, verse 28 through 32, that in the latter days, God would pour himself, the Holy Spirit upon and into all flesh. And, his man, and it tells about the various places where men will dream dreams and have visions and these types of things will happen. And there was no respect of persons. It was men and women. In Galatians 3.29, it says that there is no difference between a man and a woman in the spirit realm. So we know this and we're learning this and we're asking, how do you know when God is near? Well, the Bible clearly tells that God is omnipresent. That means he is always around us. Jesus tells us an interesting story in John 7, 37. He says, if you love me, come to me and I will give you righteousness. And he says, you shall be filled and out of your inward parts will flow a river of living waters. Then he comes over into the 14th chapter and, the, and 15 and 16. You're going to understand some things today if you'll read it. John 14, starting 10 and read through 23 or 4, maybe even to 26. But it talks about there, Jesus said in John 14, 16, he said, I'm going to pray the Father. He's going to give us the Holy Spirit who will be in us, with us, around us. And so we see that. Go down to the 21st verse and he says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And he said, if you'll do these things, I will come and manifest myself to you. Then if you read that that 23rd verse, you're going to see that if you love me, Jesus says, and keep my commandments, my Father and I will come and make our abode or live with you. In other words, they'll take up residence with you. So then where can you go from his presence? Now, sometimes, you know, we, we pray and sometimes we feel alone and we're drier in a country whirlwind and we're in the old Texas dirt storm and we don't know which way to turn and we don't know what to do and we don't know who to seek. And so we've, we've studied the word, we've had a season of prayer and we've dug around and we've went to the doctor and we've not been feeling well and we've got a bad report. And, and so we're, we're kind of beside ourselves and we're asking ourselves question, why me? And Lord, where is your presence? So there's a reason for the asking of thy present. There is a reason for trying to understand. Now, some people, you know, when uh, like in 2 Chronicles 7, when Solomon finished praying, the temple was filled with the Shekinah glory. There are times when the presence of God is so overwhelming on the folks that they just cannot stand. They cannot move. They're kind of, uh, there was a, just a lack of activity because of the presence of God. We read a place or two where Moses was hid in the cleft of the rock and God passed by and, and those kinds of things. We know that, that David was a man after God's own heart because he danced before the Lord in his shorts. So we understand those things. But when you begin to look, when you get, begin to think and you begin to question yourself, well, how do I know that I know that I'm saved? Well, when you begin, when you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus hung on that cross 
and his blood was shed for you and you asked him to come in and be the Lord of your life, he says, I will come and I will make my residence in you. I will fill you with my Holy Spirit and you will be bought and paid for with my blood and we're covenant now. So you're walking in that and you have God's eternal life, the resurrection life that raised Jesus from the dead in you and dwelling in you. I know some of us walk by sight and senses. But over in, in Romans 5, verse 2, it says, We enter into this grace by faith and receive the gift of grace. And grace means you have God's favor. God's presence is on you. Now, how do you get it to manifest? Well, the Word, word of God is very clear on this. When you believe in your heart and act upon what the Word says, Roman, uh, not Romans, but Matthew 7, verse 8 says, Believe, receive, and act upon God's word. When you begin to act upon what you know in your heart is right, God will do it. I was talking to a man yesterday, and he was telling me that God had blessed him, and he was able to make some purchases for his business and do one thing or the other, but he just says, you know, I've got to cut my business back. I've got to cut my spending back. And I says, you know what you're doing? He said, no, what is that? I said, you're just like everybody else. Just as soon as you pray, you get up and go to try to help God do what you needed him to do. So you're going to help him out. Well, that's not the way you receive grace and mercy. Grace is God's favor upon mankind, blessing mankind. And he wants to bless you more than you want to ask. So he's telling you and me, listen, come, trust me. I will do what my word says. Well, how do you get him to manifest? When you quote God's word back to him, Isaiah 43, 26, quote God's word back to him. Isaiah 55, 6 through 12, it says, my word shall not return to me void, but it will do what I sent it to do. As the rain and snow come down from heaven to water the earth and cause the earth to sprout and bring forth food, my word shall go and do what I sent it to do. Well, the word is Jesus in John 1, verse 1 through 5, it says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So Jesus' presence and his spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God and the Spirit of Christ are one and the same, was given to us on the day of Pentecost so that God would be with us. Well, you're going to say, oh, give me some more scripture. We'll go to Hebrews, the 13th chapter and verse 5. Jesus says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. So on the day of Pentecost and the day that Jesus was born here on the earth, he came to do the Father's will. And he tells us that this is the Father's will, that he would go. He would raise the dead, the blind see, the deaf hear, the lepers are cleansed, the cripples are healed. And then the good news of the gospel is preached. But a lot of folks just want to want to take a, they want to eat of this one and they want to eat of that one and they don't receive the fullness of, of the, what the Father has for you and I. So you and I, so we stand on the outside looking in. It's like a bunch of little dogs running around a corral of cattle and they're barking, they're jumping up and down and they're causing all kinds of confusion and everything, but they never get over in the corral to see what's going on. And that's the way people are. They, they'll sit and they'll cry around and, they're, and mope around and become depressed and get to feel sorry for themselves. And, and they'll say, well, God is not with me and all these things are happening. And what is the purpose of that? Satan wants you depressed and feeling sorry for yourself because we are in Christ and Christ is in God. We have the power of God. Jesus told the disciples, he said, go and wait in Jerusalem until you've been endued with power from on high. Well, what does that mean? God himself was going to visit mankind and stay there. He didn't come to stay a few hours and bring his suitcase, his jammies, and then leave. He came to stay all night and for the rest of your life and my life. And for eternity's sake, God came to be with his people. Now, he was separated for a long time because of sin. But when he sent and Jesus agreed to this before the foundation of the earth, that he would come, be the ultimate sacrifice, and renew and redeem mankind through the atonement, that we would have forgiveness, we would have redemption, we'd have the wisdom and revelation of who God is and all about God. Well, you'll hear religious people say, well, that all stopped when the disciples died and the apostles died, and God doesn't do any miracles anymore. I'm going to tell you something right 
right now. God doesn't change. He's still doing miracles. He's still healing his people. He's still blessing them financially. He's still delivering people from the enemy. And he has seated us in heavenly places. We're more than conquerors. And the devil is a liar and he's under your feet. And everything that's trying to take you down, God is doing something to raise you up and to build you up and to help you grow. And it's like getting on a old bronc. You know that that sucker is going to buck and you know he's going to do everything. But you, you apply all wisdom and all knowledge that you've received through the experience of life and through reading God's word that if you'll put one leg on one side and one on the other and you'll rear back and put your mind in the middle which is squarely upon Jesus Christ who is the author and the finisher of your foundation. He is all that he says he is and he will do all the word says that he'll do. And he's given you all power to go and tread upon scorpions and serpents and do God's work. He came to set the uh, captives free. He came to all that were oppressed of the devil. And that's everyone because Satan is running around like a roaring lion trying to destroy and cause that. The Bible says resist him and he'll flee from him. If you're down in the mouth today, get up and get your praise clothes on, get your shouting clothes on and jump up and down, dance before the Lord, or we don't dance. Well, read the book. The book says they dance before the Lord with great joy and the joy of the Lord is our strength. So we praise our God. We worship our God. It's not the church you go to. It's the attitude of mind in your heart. When we know that we know that we have what the Lord says we can have, and he wants to bless you. He wants to heal your body. He wants to bless your children. He wants you to be more than a conqueror. He wants you to go forth. He don't want you to lie and cheat and crook and borrow money and get in debt and do all those dumb things. He don't want you to do that. He wants you to be the lender and not the borrower. He wants you to walk blessed. He wants to open up the floodgates of heaven and be bountiful in your, in your storehouse. He says, if you'll trust me and try me in the area of finances, he said, I'll show you a thing or two. He said, I'm not going to rain $20 bills on you, I'm going to bless you. My presence is near to you. And if you'll read Philippians, the fourth chapter, you'll see the Lord is near. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. Well, today is the day of salvation for you. Today you're hearing that you are somebody. God has made you and he's brought you this far and you're a work in progress. First Thessalonians 5, 24. He is not through with you. So keep your eyes on the prize. The prize is the upward call and everything seated in heavenly places in our Savior Christ Jesus, the anointed Lord. And he's given us an anointing to go and break the yoke. He's given us an anointing to pray for the sick. His presence is always on you. That's to the degree. Read Ephesians 3 verse 20 and you're going to find a little more about his presence. It says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can think, you can ask, and the Amplifier says, imagine. Can you imagine something? And he says, according to the power that works within you. Well, who in the world do you think is inside of you? Not some old poor sire puss of a person. Someone inside of you is the joy of the Lord, is the love of God, the peace of God, the kindness of God, the glory of God, the presence of God, the faith of God. All those attributes of the Holy Spirit are in you. You release them when you begin to praise and worship your Father God. He loves it. Enter his courts with praise and thanksgiving. Jump up and down and shout a little bit. Who in the world cares what you're doing? You'll go to a ball game and blow a head gasket out there, running around, praising and jumping up and down when your team scores. Well, God wants us to be more excited about what he's doing. When you walk into a, an ICU room and you begin to speak the name of Jesus and all the bells and whistles on that body, those monitors go to blowing off and go to ringing and the, the registered nurse runs in to see what in the world's going on. Well, Jesus just showed up on the scene and the devil that was trying to kill that individual has to flee because the power of God is there for healing. So when you realize this, that his presence is near you. Now, I know in my own life, there are times when you don't want to pray, you don't want to read God's words, you just got the don'ts. You just don't give a hoot. You don't want to care. You just, you're just beside yourself and you just, you just sit down and you can't even spit your somatic things and you're so disgusted. That is a time to regroup. That is a time to pull aside and say, Jesus, I'm missing you somewhere. Father, I'm missing you. Holy Spirit, 
Show me the way of salvation. Show me the way to be joyful in this time. Show me the way to, to conquer this, to do this. Show me how to build this computer. Show me how to dig those post holes. Show me how to gather those wild cattle. Show me how to fly this airplane or, or be a mother. Show me how to take care of my children. Show me how to do this college test. Show me how to do everything, fly this airplane. Whatever you put your heart and your mind to, God is in the big middle of it because he's omnipresent, he's omnipresent, and he's all, he knows everything. Everything. He is everything. But when you try to go and do it on your own, you go back, go back and read John 15. It says, Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches and my father is the, is the husband. He dresses the vine. And he says, every branch that doesn't bear fruit, he takes it, takes it away and he trims that vine and that branch till more and more fruit come out of that. And then he says, without me in verse five there, he says, you can do nothing. You literally can't do anything unless you're hooked up to the vine. Go cut a limb off your tree or your rose bush. Watch it die. Watch the blue, the ever, all the green will fall off. So make up your mind today. Are you going to get hooked up and you're going to start walking in the Word? And when you're dry and you don't feel like praying, that is the time to suck down, to bear up and start praying in the Holy Ghost. Ask the Holy Spirit to pray through you. Romans 8, 26. It says we don't know how to pray, but the Holy Spirit will intercede with intercessions, with groanings too deep for others, for the perfect will of God for the saints. And then all things work together for good. Well, when you're looking for the good, what is good? Everything that is good and wonderful and, and joyful, and it's just a Christmas and every day of the year if you want it. Well, you say, Jerry Bond, you're fruitier than a nutcake. No, I'm nuttier than a fruitcake. No, that's not true. I am a man of God and so are you. You're a child of God. You've been born in, and brought out of that old death and hell and the grave and that dumb stuff that you used to do, and you're not doing that anymore. And you've been made a new creation in God. You've been brought forth and his presence is in you and me to take us and to show us who we are. It's time for the American people to stand up and become one nation under God, walking with God, blessing God, praising God. I don't care what the color of your skin is. I don't care if you were raised in the far point of the, of the end of the earth, but you've come to America to have a better life. And we have people here that will help you and they'll love you and show you the way to, to, to progress in this and become a person of God. It doesn't matter where you have been. You may have been sleeping with the hogs like the prodigal son had. But when he came back to his father, his father got out the, the, the robe and this ring, signet ring, and killed a fatted calf. And they had a celebration. The son had returned home. God is that a way for me and you. He has brought his presence. He has sent his presence, the Holy Spirit, to live inside of us. We've been bought with a price. Our body is his temple. He knows everything and he wants to keep it well. But you and I through the, the snares of our mouth in Proverbs 16, two, I mean, two, 2 verse 6, where are the snares of our mouth have encompassed us and put us down and kept us sick and afflicted. And we want that old uh, unfamiliar spirit. We want to coddle that nasty thing. <coughs> Excuse me. But I'm going to tell you something. It is time. It is time for you to stand up. It is time for you to realize that you're a man or a woman of God. You're full of the Holy Spirit of God. You're full of the Word. Speak the Word, watch the Word, and perform the Word. Let me show you something you might think about. He is always there. He will never leave you. He won't forsake you. He's always ready and willing to help you through the inward witness to show you what to do. But if you'll put the Word of God in, the Word of God will come out when you need it to come out. But if you don't put something in your think tank and in your knower, what's going to come out is the ways of the world. You can't get this through booze. You can't get this through alcohol. You can't get this through drugs or medicine, prescriptions. <clears throat> you can't get this from your best friend. You can't get it from your husband or wife. It is something you have to do yourself. You got to get on your bended knees or however you pray and you got to get in God's word and you got to seek him. And if you'll seek him, it says, what does it say in Matthew 6, 33? Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and then all these things are added. What we won't do is we want all the things added and then we forget to seek the Lord. The Lord is not short in his time for us. He loves each of us. He loves us so very much that he had Jesus die for each of us that he could redeem us from sickness, from disease, from death, from hell, the grave. You've been set free from that stuff. So it's time. It's time for you to realize and wake up and stand up and be the person of God that you are. 
Forget the past. Paul says in Philippians 3.13, forgetting the past and look forward to the upper call. In his presence you are these things. Stay in his presence. Read Psalm 91. It says, no deadly pestilence come near your dwelling place. You're under the shelter of the most high God. With long life he'll satisfy you. Call youth back into yourself. My youth is renewed like the eagle. Call strength back into your body. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Begin to speak life back into your body. Speak life back into your business. Speak life back into your marriage. Speak life into your children instead of curses. Speak the things you desire. Call those things that be not as though they are. Call in the things of God where there is not the things of God. If you're sick in your body, call healing and health into there. Read God's word. Don't lean on your understanding. Lean on his. Don't try to whip this deal up. Don't try to cowboy it up. Don't try to corral it up. You can't do it. Neither can I. But we can trust him with all of our heart and lean on his word, lean on the thought and the intent that he is with us 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, and for a lifetime, for eternity, he will never leave us. And he's faithful and just to take care of us. And he also prays for us. He also, he does everything. But you have to put your trust in him. His presence is on you. You know, I was trying to figure out a way. I had some people that were really sick and I'd give them Bible verses and I'd prayed with them and I'd anointed them and I'd done everything the scripture said to do for them. And they weren't progressing any. They were still sick. And I said, Lord, what is the deal? Where is your presence? Why? And he said, what does my word say? He says, there are miracles and there is healings. And the enemy has come about to steal the life of my son Jesus and the Holy Spirit out of each individual. He comes to kill. To read the parable in Mark 4, the parable of the sower of the seed. Instantly he comes to steal the word out of the believer. Or, or tr trials or tribulations or cares of the world to come and steal. Deceitfulness of riches. But it fell, some of the this, this word fell on good stone. Uh, good ground, and there was blessings in there. Well, let you be a good ground today. Let your soul of your heart be good. The Lord has prepared it this morning. You heard this sermon that the Lord is present. So you say, well, how can I attain it? Well, here's the way you get it, girls and boys. You go before the Lord and you say, Father, I'm a sinner. I repent. I believe in my heart that your son Jesus hung on that cross 2,000 years ago. He shed his blood that through the shedding of his blood he would cleanse me and cleanse my conscience of, of my past, of all the sin I've done. And I believe that he was buried on the third day. He arose from that grave and he gave me resurrection life. And 40, excuse me, 50 days later, he poured out the Holy Spirit. You, Father, poured yourself into every person that they might have the blessings that you have for each of us. So I receive you today as my Lord, my Savior, my Healer, my Redeemer, my Atonement, and I'm a new creation in, in you, Father, that you've made me a new person. I'm a new wine skin full of new wine. I thank you right now that you fill me with your Holy Spirit. I expect to praise you and worship you in spirit and in truth because the Bible says that I must do that. I believe what the Word of God says, so I stand on the Word of God, and your presence is in me, near me, and around me all the time, and I don't have to work this deal up. I am your child, and the enemy can't come near me because I am covered by the blood of Jesus, and he protects me, and my testimony tells Satan that I am a child of yours, so I'm standing on the promises of God, and all they are, Father, is yes and amen. I know who I am. I have these things because your Word says that I have them. Your presence is on me, in me, around me. Your anointing is on me, in me, and around me. I have nothing to fear except fear itself. And all I've got to do is say in the name of Jesus, be gone, and it has to leave. So when I come to the place where I know who I am, I stand on the Word, and then the Word says when you've done everything you know to do in Ephesians 6, it says stand. And so I'm standing, trusting you, Father, that your word is a promise. It will do what you sent it to do. And I am your child, believing you, trusting you. And death, nor life, nor nothing can separate me from this. I'm standing on it today. And I promise you, Father, that I'll be obedient. And I will eat the fat of the land because you told me if I do these things, I would. And I would be blessed going, coming, and everything. So I just give you praise. Let's go to the Lord in prayer today. 
Father, thank you for the awesome word that your presence is always near us, that your hand of guidance, your favor, your mercy, your grace is upon your people. Your healing, your Jehovah Rapha, your, the Lord, our healer, you brought forth through the shedding of your, the beating upon your back and the shedding of your blood, you brought forgiveness and healing to all your people and you atoned the, the, the atonement you set forth and seated everyone back from Adam to the end of time. There's no one outside of the corral. They can all come in and eat eat at the table. There's more places at the table, more more uh, silverware and, and, and plates are set at the table and the table's expanded for any and everyone who will call upon the name of Jesus and receive it today because that you are near to those. You're not somewhere else. You're right there with that person that needs you the most today. Thank you for healing people of cancers. Thank you for delivering them of arthritis, rheumatism. Thank you for healing them of sugar diabetes. Thank you for healing them of strokes. All the things that are happening to the people, we just give you praise, Father, that your word and your son has brought forth all these things so that the people might rejoice and have an abundant life, that the Lord is near and his presence is on us. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. And all the people said amen. Today, please subscribe to our daily devotions at PastorJerryBond.com. There you can view our TV schedule, the replays of our shows, and subscribe to our social media. There's a place for donations there, PastorJerryBond.com. You can go online and you can and, uh, send through PayPal and help us with this, take this old cowboy, take this message of Jesus out to the hens of the world. We can also be in in ministries as a 501c3, post office box 51542, Amarillo, Texas, 79159. You can do that. We just thank you so much for your prayers, for your encouragement, for all the things that you've done for us and help us to take this message that Jesus loves his people and that he's here and the Holy Spirit is always near to those that will cry out. And, and boy, when you do, he hears your word because he's right there. His presence is always on you. Don't get a feel like you're the only one. You're not the only one. And just ask the Lord to, to send labors across your pathway that will encourage you and help you. You know, in this time of need, it's time to come together and to pray for one another because we all are part of one another. We are to love one another and love our Father the same way. When we're walking in love, God is love. When you walk in love, you're not holding people in account for all the wicked things and the silly things that we do. You're rejoicing in the Lord and you're patting him and hugging him and holding him and say, Jesus loves you. He's, he died on that cross that you might have life and have it more abundantly. That this message of, of Jesus comes to bring his presence of his Father into every one of us so that we all could know that we know that no, we've been redeemed from sin, from sickness, from all the things that trouble us. May this day we all come together in agreement in Jesus' name and said, Amen. Mm -hmm.